Katie. Um, those of you who have been doing Cambridge 23 Things may also know me as Girl in the Moon. Um, and I'm going to be talking about some informal research into Facebook. Oh, this one. There we go. So, as part of Cambridge 23 Things, which for anyone who hasn't heard about it was a programme um, that lasted two or three months, I guess, over the summer, where a load of librarians looked at a load of different web two tools, 23 web two tools. Um, as part of that, we looked at Facebook and was Facebook good for libraries? How do you set up a page for your library on Facebook? What libraries are there out there that have good Facebook pages? What are they like? That sort of thing. And we all wrote our little blog posts about it and it was great. There was lots of interesting discussion. But I thought, well, it's all very well a load of librarians talking to each other about people using library Facebook pages. But what would be really interesting is to talk to people who use Facebook and sometimes libraries and see what they think. So I went online and I posted a question. Would you look for information about libraries on Facebook and why or why not? I use Facebook entirely personally. I'm not really friends with many people I know from work there. It's not something I'm not professionally networking. I've just got a bunch of friends, most of whom I know from college or from school. And so I wanted to see what they said about that question. And a bit like organising a teach me, ask a question on Facebook and very often you'll get an answer. So I had, oh, I think 20 different comments on my wall, which is, you know, by far and away a record for me. <laughs> I'm not that popular. Um, I asked a couple of people in person as well because they were sort of passing and I grabbed them. And I wanted to get their questions, so I took some really scratchy notes about what they said. Um, I had, I think somewhere between 12 and 15 different people responding, um, and they were not a huge range of people. Most of them were my age, which is mid-twenties. All of them had a university education. One of them was an actual librarian, um, and all of them are fairly you know, academic and interested in that sort of thing, so it's probably not hugely relevant. Um, but I thought what I found out was quite interesting, and it did reinforce some of the things we'd been saying about Facebook and libraries sort of amongst ourselves, and so I thought it was useful to let other people know what they said. So first of all, people are a bit ambivalent about some of the stuff that's on Facebook. I mean, we've all heard about Facebook privacy settings being a bit dodge and you know, that kind of stuff, but I've blanked out all the people. I didn't do good survey practice and ask them who they could, you know, whether I could use their data worldwide. So I'm going to have to try and remember not to refer to them by name. You know, I can squint and still recognise their pictures as well. But anyway... <laughs> This person here said that Facebook should just be for, you know, people talking to each other and social groups. There should be businesses and there should be universities and it should just all be, Facebook should be for, you know, for, for friends talking to each other. Um, he also later said that he thought events in libraries were an oxymoron. And <laughs> <laughs> did we actually need libraries in the modern world? And so, you know, I don't know how representative he is of the sort of people we might ever reach on Facebook. Um, but there was kind of initial resistance among many of the people to the idea of libraries on Facebook. They were kind of a bit, oh, is that really the place? Um, and then the second thing I found was that if people want to know boring, bog-standard information about a library, Facebook isn't where they're looking. They're all going to go to Google and Google for the name of their library. The canny ones are going to go to the institution or council webpage. Probably if they're anything like me, they then won't find it there and have to go to Google. But, you know... <laughs> Um, so, you know, Facebook as a place just to put your opening times, probably not worth it because they're not going to look. However, a few people said, well, I'd, I'd Google for boring information, but maybe if a library I knew was on Facebook, maybe I'd, I'd be a friend of them because then maybe they'd tell me about events. So this person here said, if she was a member of her local library, um, we've had a conversation about this, <laughs> <laughs> then she'd be tempted to join a Facebook group because then she'd, she'd find out what was going on. So it's not all, hmm, why are Facebook's on, li well, libraries on Facebook. It's kind of, you know, people actually, when they think about it, they change their minds a bit. This one was really interesting. This is a small snippet from a great big long comment, um, four or five paragraphs, and which mentioned the thing about I'd probably Google, but then there was a couple of issues that were raised. There's the one that's actually in there, which I'll come to in a sec. The other one was, this was someone really quite perceptive, and she's noticed that, Institutional web pages, very often out of date. Something we all know about. But not only has she noticed that, she's realised that that's probably because a lot of people 
in the actually doing things roles don't necessarily have easy access to updating their institutional web page. For whatever reason, there's, you know, it all has to go through IT or it's very difficult to do or it takes a long time, whatever. So she said, well, first of all, institutional web pages aren't very, often aren't very in date, so that's not very good. So maybe a Facebook page wouldn't be in date either, so why would I look there? But actually, maybe a Facebook page is easier to update, so maybe it would be better. But maybe I wouldn't exactly trust it, and I'd use my judgment to see whether it looked, you know, if it's still got last Christmas's closing period, maybe I won't use it. Um, so if you're in a situation where it's really hard work updating your institutional web page, then using something like Facebook or something else that's outside that hierarchy that you can edit easily, if you really sell that as a way of finding out this information it's hard to normally put out there, then it's probably a really good place. The other thing she said was this business about chaos. Now, chaos is great. Um, it's Cambridge Hands on Science, and they organise hands on science events for children. And they go all around the country and they have these great big events where kids get to play with corn flour and water and they build arch bridges and they electrolyse water and they make big bangs and they have a vat of liquid nitrogen and they put roses in it and then they <laughs> smash them and they shatter. Well, the kids don't do that. I mean, you know, a man with some big gloves does that. But they do great things and they go around the country looking for venues to do this in the summer. And so she said if she was looking for somewhere in a town and she couldn't find somewhere and she thought maybe the library would take an event, she might look at Facebook to see if the library was the sort of place that might do that. So it's, you're not using Facebook as you know, an immediate information store. You're using it as a, if you're the si sort of library that's out there and it wants to do stuff and it would like to have 400 screaming children come through the doors <laughs> one Saturday, exploding God knows what, Apparently, you actually asked her, well, how many, of your, how many of your experiments aren't tidy enough for a library? And apparently lots of them are. So, you know, it's not mainly exploding God knows what. It's, it's lots of other things. Um, if, your, if your library wants to be out there and it wants to look helpful and friendly and keen to do new events, then use it because at least this person is going to find you. Um, but, so, yeah, you can use it like that. So, this is kind of a summary. People won't look for boring information, but they will look for other stuff. So the, this bottom one here, that's a very close friend of mine. Would you look for information on Facebook? No. But I know you're a, f a friend of your department, your faculty library. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I am, aren't I? Oh, well, why? Well, because they tell me stuff. Oh, right, so you're getting information. Well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> but do they send you emails as well? Yes. Do they send you the same stuff? No. So, again, this is someone quite canny. He's realised there's two information sources and he's signed up to both so that he can get all the information. Now, I'm not sure that's a great model. I don't like the idea of if you're canny enough to be friends with someone on Facebook, you find out more stuff. But people are willing to do that. They're willing to kind of be a part of almost of a community online to do with the library um, and sort of bolster the library's profile a bit by doing that. Um, so that's a very brief rundown of what I did. Facebook is good to make your library look interesting. Um, I was quite sceptical about it initially, but actually I think there's something in it. I think it's worth doing, um, but you've got to manage it well. And if you've still got last Christmas's borrowing regulations up, <laughs> you might as well not have a Facebook page because I think you're doing yourself more harm than good. Um, I am going to put all the survey responses, beautifully anonymised, up on my blog at some point in the hopefully near future. So if you want to find out more, you can there. Um, and I don't even know if I've seen Isla's one minute face. No, you haven't. No, there we go. That's a gabbled introduction to Facebook for libraries. Thank you.